Welcome back to Flowmaster Reviews. I'm Adam J for future content on this channel. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I'll tell you, it's been an absolute pleasure growing up as a Ninja Turtles fan. Surviving the good, the bad, the ugly, and the oh hell no. So with the recent release of Mutant Mayhem, I was going to take a look back and rank all 10 TMNT films. So let's kick this off at the very bottom and not waste any time with... <laughs> Guys, this movie was trash when I saw it in theaters, and it's still trash now. Michael Bay got his dirty little producing hands on the Turtles, absolutely butchered the lore, and made the Turtles look like hulking, unappealing monsters that were really hard to look at. I'll say one thing for the film, the actors they got to play the Turtles actually did a good job. They were not the problem. The writing, and all the asinine changes to the lore within the writing was the problem. The foot is named the foot because they step over people. I'm dead serious. That is what they say in this film. The turtles were April O'Neil's childhood pets. Why? Get that shit the fuck out of here. Splinter looks hideous and has no welcoming presence whatsoever. Shredder looks like Megatron 2.0. Uh, uh, what the fuck is this shit? And I'm sorry, but it's fucking obvious they changed who the Shredder was at the last minute. I know it is! Yes, people were mad that William Fickner was going to play the Shredder initially, as the Japanese translation of Eric Sachs is Iroku Saki. I'll admit, I was one of those people. In my opinion, Shredder should be Japanese in a live-action film. I agree. But here's the thing. I was even more pissed that they didn't follow through with their idea. Not only did the Shredder footage reek of reshoots, it showed us they had no confidence in the movie they were making. I can live with a TMNT film at least trying something new and turning out bad. But a TMNT film that even its own creators had no faith in? Screw that. Literally, the only surprising thing in this film was that Megan Fox's acting wasn't the problem with it. So, when you're Michael Bay, if at first you don't succeed, fail, fail, and fail again. Because after the first film failed, Michael Bay and company decided, hey, Let's put in the things the fans want. Let's get Krang in there. Let's get the Technodrome. Bebop and Rocksteady. Let's get Stephen Amell from Arrow to play Casey Jones. Let's get Baxter Stockman in there. Yeah, let's give Shredder more screen time. Yeah, let's put all these things on screen. And then completely butcher all of them. You fucked up, bitch. <laughs> Casey Jones is a wannabe detective instead of a vigilante who hates the justice system, that's strike one. Baxter Stockman is meant to be smart, but is instead an absolute moron, that's strike two. Bebop and Rocksteady only get one fight with the turtles and spout dialogue so unbelievably retarded you pray to go deaf, that's strike three. Shredder is recruited by Krang and immediately trusts him, something he never did in the original show. With the body I've designed, no force on Earth could stop me, including myself. That's why I don't trust you, Krang. So yeah, that's strike four. The Technodrome is on screen for like two minutes at the very end. That's strike five. I, I could go on, folks. This was every bit as bad as the last film. Only the film's creators actually had confidence in this one. God knows why. But you know who didn't have confidence in it? You know who really hated making these movies? The actors who played the Turtles. Oh yeah. Alan Richton stated in an interview with Collider years ago that making these films was a nightmare for all of them. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtles was like the, the worst production experience I've ever had. It made me hate life so much. Wow. wow. Yeah, so I much. wanted to get into that because, yeah, because. I hated life on that show. They were so bad to us. And really? they broke so many promises. Like it was, it was, it was rough. They were paid fuck all, had to leave the lot after everyone else had already left, depriving them of sleep every day, and were prevented from doing any marketing or press for either film. All I can say is thank god we never got a third one. The actors playing the Turtles deserve better, and I'm glad to see that at least Richton recovered from this tragedy. You know, when I was a kid, I had all three films on VHS, but I almost never watched this one. After revisiting it years later, it was pretty clear why. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 was simply a bad movie. Don't get me wrong, I did like some things in it. The concept of them traveling through time to feudal Japan was cool. It wasn't executed well at all, but the idea was there. I did like the development Raph went through with Yoshi, helping someone else control his anger just like Splinter once did for him. That was nice. I even liked the bits with Casey Jones and the Warriors. Yeah, those scenes were dumb filler, but I at least got a few laughs out of them. And in a bad movie like this, I'll take what I can get. So, what's wrong with this movie? 
The story is boring. The villain is boring. The turtles are more annoying than they are funny. Casey Jones just so happens to have an ancestor in feudal Japan. The effects are terrible. And last but certainly not least, the animatronics in this film are some of the worst I have ever seen. I mean, I'm sorry, look at this. Now look at this. And now look at this film. You see? You see what I'm talking about here? Their dialogue doesn't even match their lips half the time. These things belong rotting at a Chuck E. Cheese somewhere, not proudly shown in a Hollywood movie. Because trust me, when it comes to this film, there was nothing to be proud of. Okay, let me just clarify this. Huge rise in quality between Turtles 3 and this. I mean, gargantuan rise in quality. And as I stated in my review, I enjoyed many aspects of this movie. I recommended it. The animation is brilliant. It's right up there with the Spider-Verse films in that regard. A lot of the characters are enjoyable. The humor is on point and it has engaging themes. The turtles are great in this. I love that they feel like actual kids and react how kids would. But I'm sorry, I found the overall plot sloppy and the changes they made to a lot of the lore did not sit right with me. You got Giancarlo Esposito, one of the best villain actors of the last decade to play Baxter Stockman, and you kill him off in the opening of the film. You have Bebop and Rocksteady here, and they're both good guys by the end. Why? No damn clip. The mutants are fun, but all feel interchangeable. Most of them only seem like they're here to justify the film's title of Mutant Mayhem. The whole backstory behind Splinter and Shredder is completely done away with. And in regards to that last thing, if I'm going to crap on the Michael Bay movies for doing that, I have to hold this film's foot to the fire as well. Either it's all okay, or none of it is. I said this in my review, but I'll say it again. The best comparison I can make regarding this film is Star Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness works as a film, but doesn't work as a Star Trek film. This movie is a fine film by its own, but I'm sorry, as a Ninja Turtles film, it barely qualifies, and I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid on this one. Turtles Forever is simply a fun Ninja Turtles film, and a nostalgic treat for anyone who grew up in the original series, as we see the Turtles from the 80s coming face to face with the Turtles of the 4 Kids reboot. Now I'll admit, I wasn't big on the 4 Kids show, not that it wasn't good, but after the first season it really started falling off the rails for me and I just wasn't that invested in it. I mean, come on, Shredder as an Utrom? That's just dumb. But I'll admit, despite not being too into that particular iteration of the Turtles, I loved this movie. Seeing the differences and similarities between both series was great. The original series could be serious when it needed to be, but let's be fair, it was mostly goofy. It was a fun kids show with some cool action and memorable characters. The four kids show could be goofy when it wanted to be, but mostly took itself too seriously. This film plays in the strengths and weaknesses of both shows perfectly, making for a very memorable experience. Overall, the film was just one big celebration of the Turtles in general. Hell, they even go to the comics world and meet the original versions of them, who didn't have different color bandanas and all had the same gruff personalities. I especially love how that version of Leonardo just started narrating every fight like the comics did. It just cracked me up. My only real gripe with the movie was the voice cast. Unfortunately, the original actors for the Turtles were all members of SAG, which four kids did not have a contract with. So unfortunately, none of them could come back to voice the Turtles in the special. Sadly, it was the same thing for James Avery, who played the Shredder in the early seasons of the show. So when you hear the voices in the special, it just feels off. Not that the voice actors here are bad, they aren't. It's just clearly not the same ones from the show. On top of that, again, outside of the first season, I wasn't that big on the four kids show. Those are the reasons why it's not as high on this list. This was a movie I honestly had no ambition of seeing, despite being a fan of both franchises. It just felt like both Batman and TMNT were getting desperate for ideas, so why not do a crossover? And let me tell you, I'm kicking myself in the ass for sleeping on this one. This movie just rocked. This was a film I didn't know I needed in my life until I finally saw it. From Shredder and the Foot Clan teaming up with the League of Assassins, to Batman's rogue gallery getting doused with Mutagen, this was just a fun time. The action in the movie is awesome, watching Batman fight the Turtles and even watching Batman get his ass handed to him by Shredder at one point was amazing. I love the character interactions here. Donnie has great chemistry with Barbara Gordon. Rav gets a surprisingly poignant moment with Batman towards the tail end of the film. And Shredder and Ra's al Ghul are a sadistic pair made in heaven. The animation is perfect and the turtle designs are quite unique. I even like Batman's look, bringing back some of the old school blue. The voice acting all around is top notch and there was one particular moment that called back to Secret of the Use. That made me smile. 
If I have one complaint, it's that when the villains at Arkham are doused with the mutagen, it's pretty much done after that one big sequence. It's a great sequence, probably the most fun the film has to offer, but I really wish the mutated villains had bigger parts to play in the end. Mr. Freeze is a polar bear, Poison Ivy is a giant plant, Harley Quinn is a hyena, Joker is a cobra... for some reason? I still don't know, but regardless, these mutations were so unbelievably badass that I wish they'd lasted longer. Regardless though, this is definitely one you don't want to miss. If you love Batman, TMNT, or both, watch this immediately, you will not regret it. Now I know I'm about to get a ton of crap in the comments, so let me say this. In terms of animation, yes, Mutant Mayhem is not only better, it kicks this film in the balls. However, in terms of story and character, this film is better by a country fucking mile. It's not even close, not even a little bit. It's like the argument between Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. Yes, Across the Spider-Verse had the better animation, but Into the Spider-Verse had a far more impactful story, and I will die on that hill. I honestly feel the same way here. TMNT was an animated continuation of the original three films, with several story elements and a scene at the end confirming this. It takes place years after Part 3, where Donnie and Mikey have normal jobs, Raph is secretly a vigilante known as the Night Watcher, and Leo has returned to unite his brothers after being away for a year. The character moments are some of the best of this franchise, especially regarding Leo and Raph. You feel Leo's need to reunite his brothers as a team, but you also understand Raph's resentment towards Leo for leaving them. Speaking of which, this movie finally gave us the showdown between these two characters that fans had wanted for years. No bullshit, no cutting to anything, just a straight up fight between Leo and Raph. And the way it ends is actually a bit heartbreaking which I wasn't expecting. Leo tries to tell him while they're fighting that his anger will make him lose sight of everything. When Raph defeats Leo and actually has to stop himself from killing Leo, he only proves Leo's point and understands why Leo is the leader and he's not. It's the best character work they've done with Raph since the original film and Nolan North's performance as the character just knocks it out of the park. Yes, that's Nolan fucking North. In fact, the entire cast is great. Sarah Michelle Gellar was an awesome April O'Neil. They even developed her relationship with Casey Jones further, with Chris Evans stepping into the role. Of course, there's also the late Mako as Master Splinter, who anyone who's watched The Last Airbender can tell you has the, one of the most welcoming and unique voices on the planet. But for my money, the best actor in this film aside from Nolan North is Patrick Stewart as the villain. He portrays Winners, a wealthy businessman who at first seems to be collecting monsters for a nefarious purpose, especially when he releases his stone brothers from their slumber. But what makes him interesting is that when all is said and done, not only is he an original villain, he's not really a villain at all when you think about it. He's not someone who wants to cause chaos. He's not someone who wants to hurt anyone else. He's an immortal man who made a mistake, accidentally unleashed several monsters into the world, and only wants to return the monsters to their dimension and end his curse. He's simply a man who wants to find peace. For a my money, that's far more interesting than Megatron Shredder or a giant fly monster. It was something unique to this film that genuinely surprised me. And I can even say the same for how the Foot Clan was utilized. I never thought I'd see the day where the Turtles and the Foot Clan were forced to fight together. That was pretty damn cool. And I liked how the movie took a risk and didn't just bring back Shredder. He's mentioned, but I liked how they moved away from him and tried something new. The action is a ton of fun, like most of these movies. But like Mutant Mayhem, the action is able to be more stylized and off the wall because it's animated. Even Splinter gets to kick some ass this time. TMNT is one of the best Ninja Turtles films out there and deserves a lot more respect than it gets. I will never understand the low scores for this one. I loved it when I saw it in theaters in 2007 and I love it even more now 16 years later. Make no mistake whatsoever, I love Secret of the Ooze. Yeah, they toned down some of the violence because of all the parents complaining. Get a life, you fucking losers. Yeah, Corey Feldman isn't Donatello in this one. And yeah, Super Shredder was a bit of a letdown in the end. And totally went out like a bitch. But I'm sorry, all that aside, this is classic Ninja Turtles. The fun action sequences, the camaraderie with the turtles, the funny one-liners, the awesome villains. Speaking of which, why does everyone hate Toko and Razar? I fucking love Toko and Razar. Y'all need to stop the Toko and Razar hate. Oh, we wanted Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah, and that somehow makes Toko and Razar bad because... Yeah, that's what I thought. The fact is that they didn't have the rights to use Bebop and Rocksteady, so they were never going to be in the film. Toko and Razar make fine substitutes for the two, and I thought them having the minds of babies throwing a fit was actually kind of hilarious. When it is over, you will call me Master. Mama? 
In addition, it's worth noting that Krang was actually supposed to be in this film, with Jordan Perry later revealed to be a vessel for him, but budget cuts prevented that from coming to pass. There's actually a shot in the film where you can clearly see an Utron behind Professor Perry as he's disposing of the ooze. So for anyone wondering what the actual secret of the ooze was, the secret was cut from the movie, and it's a shame. Despite this though, the movie is loaded with hilarious and memorable moments. I would argue that the turtles are funnier here than they were in the first film, because they were forced to tone down the violence, they had to up the comedy to make it more appealing to kids, and it did work. And yes, I have no shame whatsoever in admitting, I fucking love the ninja rap. Oh yeah, I sing along to that shit in my car. I know every verse to it, bring the fucking hate mail. That whole sequence at the end of the movie with them fighting in the nightclub is one of the best moments in any of these films. Don't even argue with me. It's funny, it's action-packed, but above all, it's a ton of fun. In fact, while not the best Ninja Turtles movie, I will say... It's the most fun Ninja Turtles movie. Bitch about the ninja rap all you want. Secret of the Ooze rocked. Out of all the movies I had to watch for this ranking, this was the one I was looking forward to the least. This film was apparently the conclusion of the TV show that aired on Nickelodeon after the 2012 show had ended. I watched a few episodes of Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and to say that I was unimpressed would be putting it lightly. I didn't like that all the turtles were jokesters. I didn't like Splinter at all. April was nothing like her character, and no, her being black had nothing to do with it. It's the fact that she's constantly talking jive and acting annoying. I will admit, there was some solid humor in those episodes, but it just wasn't for me. So watching a film based on that show didn't really interest me. So I saw the film, and my jaw is still on the damn floor because this movie was absolutely outstanding. I'm sorry, but considering what it's based on, this movie had no right being this good. The story starts years in the future where the Krang have taken over humanity. Donatello and Raphael are dead, and only a handful of freedom fighters are left standing. Michelangelo sacrifices himself to open a time gate, which in itself was fucking heartbreaking and soul-crushing, and my god, I watched Michelangelo wither to nothing! And Leonardo sends his apprentice, Casey Jones, to the past to warn everyone of the pending apocalypse. Oh yeah, they pull the Terminator and turn Casey Jones into Kyle Reese. That is badass. Why is no one acknowledging this, goddammit? With the Krang about to be released, Casey, the Turtles, Splinter, and April enter a race against time to stop the end of the world. The visuals in this film are outstanding. I love the anime style of the fight scenes. They have such fluent movement, it's just so cool to look at. The character development is some of the best I've ever seen in Ninja Turtles, period. The whole arc for Leonardo is set up perfectly, and his friendship with Casey is the very heart of the film. I loved watching Leonardo just come into his own as a leader and realize that not everything is about him. He has to let go of his ego and put his team first to be a proper leader. Krang has never, never been more badass or threatening. Don't get me wrong, I love the original Krang. He's good for a laugh, but the Krang here, they're more like the Borg, able to infect and assimilate other life forms. It gets pretty intense at certain moments, especially when the Krang leader assimilates the entire Foot Clan. April and Splinter, two characters I found annoying in the show, not only got good laughs here, but also managed to play pivotal roles in the story. When you can make me enjoy characters that I initially didn't like, you're doing something right. Also, I'll admit, one thing that turned me off of the show was the inclusion of Mystic Weapons. I thought that was a dumbass inclusion. But you know, fuck me if this movie doesn't kick you in the balls with how they tie those weapons into the very heart of the film. And as a result, it totally justifies those weapons being entirely fucking badass in this movie. The film is action-packed, it's thrilling, it's exciting, and it's filled with so much heart and love for not just the Ninja Turtles, but oddly for the sci-fi genre as well. This is literally Terminator with Ninja Turtles. I don't get why fans aren't loving this one. Guys, look, this isn't even a contest. It, like, it, it's not close. Not even close. As great as a lot of the movies on this list are, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film from 1990 is just on another level. 
It's a film where everything is perfect. The storytelling is perfect. The themes are perfect. The animatronics are perfect. The characters are beautifully represented. And the gritty tone of the comic book is brought to life in full force. This film gave us the storyline from the comics, but gave the turtles the personalities and characteristics they had in the iconic animated series. So it knew how to appeal to the adults who love the comic and the kids who love the cartoon. You'd think these two things wouldn't blend well, but to say they blended perfectly would be an understatement. At the end of the day, what I ultimately love about this film is that I've grown to appreciate it more as an adult than I ever did as a kid. It's essentially the story of three fathers and their families, Splinter, Shredder, and Charles Pennington. Splinter would gladly die for his kids. There was one moment where he says the line, all fathers care for their sons, and I to this day cannot watch it without getting teary-eyed. In this moment, Splinter knows he's probably going to die, but he doesn't care about that. All he cares about is his kids. That's a great father. Shredder recruits the youth of New York City, calls them his family, and would gladly let them die for him and his cause. As Splinter says to the foot soldiers in the movie, Shredder uses you. He cares nothing for you or the people you hurt. And Charles Pennington is simply trying to understand his son, which is something the average parent in the audience can relate to, as his son Danny is very rebellious and feels that his father could care less about him. It takes a conversation with Splinter for Danny to really understand that the Foot is a fake family, being used by a madman who truly doesn't care about them. And when his father sees him again, he proves Danny wrong. He doesn't scream at him. He doesn't hit him. He doesn't act disinterested in him. He simply asks, are you all right, Danny? It's these little details that truly heighten the themes of this movie. Raphael's arc is especially great, with him having trouble controlling his anger and trying to go through his struggle alone. And yes, that scene where Splinter consoles Raphael about his anger also makes me cry. It's a perfectly filmed, acted, and scored scene that hits every emotional beat necessary. It's only strengthened a few scenes later when Splinter is taken and Raphael breaks down. The emotional moments in this film are absolutely perfect. There is not one emotional scene that doesn't work. But also, the humor is on point throughout all of it. The one-liners are perfect and endlessly quotable. The dynamic between the turtles is expertly handled. Leo and Raph's relationship is well developed, and Mikey and Donnie get several hilarious moments together. And honestly, can anyone really tell me they don't love Casey Jones in this movie? Class is paying 101. Your instructor's Casey Jones. Look. I don't want to fight you. Well, tough rocks, pal. Not only is his relationship with April well developed, not only are his scenes with Wrath hilarious, he is every bit as badass as the Turtles themselves. I love that scene where he shows up to help them against the Foot Clan. Hmm? Oh, who is the babe? Who the heck is that? Wayne Gretzky? On steroids? That whole fight with Raph is so damn funny and cool, I could literally sit here quoting the entire thing. It's awesome. And let me just say, Judith Hodges' April O'Neil is the GOAT, and her chemistry with the Turtles was perfection. This is a Turtles film that has everything you could ever want in a Turtles film. An emotional story, a respect for the source material, a gritty tone, a ton of character development, and tons of humor to spare. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 is not just the best Ninja Turtles movie. It isn't just one of the best comic book movies ever made. It is one of my favorite movies, period. Ninja kick the damn rabbit! Do something! So how would you rank these films? Please let me know in the comments, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more.